Uh, well, good morning. It's uh, great to be back in, in Palm Beach County here in Palm Beach Island. Uh, we are going to, I'm going to make some remarks and uh, we are going to hear from uh, Haley Robson and Jenna Lisa Cordovez, uh, who were, um, you know, both victims of, of Jeffrey Epstein uh, uh, back in the day. And, um, you know, they say that uh, justice delayed is, is justice denied. And, and I think in many respects, this whole ordeal has proven that to be true. Uh, we came in as governor back in 2019, and I know there was a lot of questions about what happened down here. How did you end up with this situation where you had basically a sweetheart deal? And then, of course, you know, it did lead to this bubbling back up uh, at the end of last decade. But uh, the reality is the investigation was largely stymied because you didn't have access to the grand jury materials. And so we were looking and saying, okay, well, there, there's not much we can do. Clearly there was legal fights about that, uh, but I think the legislature and I agreed that you know, there needs to be a mechanism in some of these rare circumstances where people can get the truth uh, and where we can try to pursue justice. And so we're now sitting here decades later and you've had Epstein, and then Maxwell is actually in prison in Florida, and yet nothing else has ever happened uh, with any of this. How is that possible given the magnitude of what was going on? And what was going on in Florida was only a fraction of what was happening because you had activities and abuse in New York City, in, in the Virgin Islands, and, and this was a massive, massive operation here uh, that was targeting uh, these very, very young girls. Uh, and to not have justice on this is something that has been a big black spot um, on our justice system. So the, the legislature, and, and why, why did that happen? Well, it happened because you, know, you had somebody that was very rich and well-connected and uh, was able to engineer an outcome that uh, the average citizen would likely never have been able to, to do, and that's wrong. So wh what they're doing with this uh, the legislation I'm going to sign is going to say, uh, and there are certain in Florida law now uh, exceptions to the secrecy of the grand jury, and it's right that, and we have very strong grand jury secrecy laws overall. Uh, you go in, uh, those are people testifying, they're not subject to cross examination. There's reason why you don't just put that out publicly. Uh, but in certain cir circumstances, uh, if someone is on in the trial and a, a witness stand and, and trial and they're saying things that conflict with their grand jury testimony, you can use it. There's certain, always been certain circumstances. And one is, you know, if justice demands, well, this bill says that in a situation like this, uh, that this is in the interest of justice to, to disclose it. So this would green light. I know there's been a lot of litigation on this, but this would green light the disclosure of the grand jury materials regarding the Jeffrey Epstein case. And this is long overdue, uh, but again, we feel that uh, we can't just turn a blind eye, uh, we've got to do. So I'm going to sign HB 117. Uh, it will allow the disclosure of grand jury testimony uh, in this Jeffrey Epstein case. And if there were cases similar, uh, if the subject of the inquiry is dead, if the investigations about sexual ac uh, assault with a minor, sexual activity with a minor, if the testimony was pre previously disclosed by a court order, and if the state attorney is noted and so this is going to affect uh, perhaps more than just this case, but a relatively small number of cases. Uh, and so we're happy in Florida to be uh, leading the effort for transparency and for accountability, uh, because what happened uh, was clearly wrong and, and the punishment uh, was simply wholly inadequate to the crime. And I know people have seen that for, for many, many years now. So thank, I thank the legislature for doing this. Uh, I, I'm glad that we have a, a couple of the victims who have agreed to come and talk about this legislation. And so I want to invite them up. So first we'll start with Haley uh, to come up and then we'll hear from Jenna Lisa. Thank you, Governor. Um, my name is Haley Robson. A lot of you might have heard me if you've been following the Jeffrey Epstein story. Um, I just want to reiterate what our governor has spoken on about this being a long time overdue. Um, I, I can't express enough how we've all been so affected by this. And I know for the regular average citizen, it's just time that goes by. 
a lot of people tend to forget, but this is not something we should be forgetting about. This is not something to be sweeping under the rug. A lot of us are still in therapy. We're still trying to survive. Um, I can't express the gratitude I have for this bill. Um, sorry. <laughs> I never thought that this would be in our cards, but as I stand here today, <clears throat> I just wanna thank all the people that believed in us, our attorneys, our therapists, um, everybody who came to support this bill, our amazing governor. Um, I just am trying to put pieces together, um, the final pieces of this puzzle to help me move on and finally get the peace that I deserve for my life. And I am just so grateful and I would really just wanna know um, why was Jeffrey Epstein given such grace and mercy for his humane, inhumane crimes? And why were we so outed in the media and treated so poorly? Um, victim shaming in this high profile case has damaged a lot of us. It has made us retract statements. It's made us internalize the trauma. And a lot of us are just trying to still find our way through our healing journey. Um, and I just wanna remind everybody to please be kind um, we are all still struggling with this, and we just want to understand what happened. So, thank you. Good job. All right, Jenna Lisa. Thank you, Governor. My name is Jenna Lisa, and I am one of many, many victims of Epstein's. Um, I was one of dozens if not hundreds of children abused by Epstein for over a decade. We have had no closure whatsoever on what has happened with the, these crimes. Um, Epstein was charged for his crimes in 2006 and we are finally going to learn why. We have been left in the dark for so long with no answers to what is going on and why things played out the way that they did. Um, it would have saved literally hundreds of girls from being put in a position that none of us ever wanted to be put in. Um, we are so, so very grateful to get a little bit more answers and, and pray that um, more justice comes out of this and we couldn't be more proud uh, that we're getting this for the first time ever. I mean, really, seriously, first time. So thank you, seriously. Absolutely. All right, well, whoever wants to come up, we'll uh, make it official right here. Me too, more. Okay, perfect. Is, is today leap year? 29? Okay. in the books, long time coming. We're happy to take questions. Uh, you know, the the uh, both of the women are, are are willing to also entertain some questions, and so just let us know. Chris, uh, I guess. Um, thank you, Governor DeSantis. Uh, first, I'd love to hear from um, from some of you, uh, the, the two ladies. Um, what will this mean to you? And do you think you're finally going to get answers? And then I had a question for the governor too, if that's okay. Go ahead, get in front of the mic. I think that my journey is very different from some of the other victims. Um, it's very unfortunate. Um, I think I was categorized in some places I didn't belong. And I think that with these documents coming out, it's gonna shed light to what I've known this entire time. And I'm just really excited to see what is and what is not going to be in these documents. And I think it's going to be groundbreaking. And Governor, um, so, I Thanks. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so uh, the prosecutor who gave this sweetheart deal is a man named Alexander Acosta. He was later appointed to be Donald Trump's Secretary of Labor. I'm just wondering why you decided not to make that an issue in the presidential primary. 
And I also wanted to know what you think about um, Laura Trump becoming uh, the RNC chair. Is well, uh, so on, on these, the, the documents released will perhaps shed some light on, because uh, I think a lot of people may not remember that um, this was a deal that was really engineered with the Southern District of Florida, the, the U.S. attorney or the federal. Uh, the case was not brought federally, which I think there would have been a, 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 an ability to do that. Instead, they, they converted it into the state, which were the charges were relatively minor, and obviously the punishment was effectively a slap on the wrist given the severity of the crimes. So that has been a, a question I think a lot of people have had. This was something that was really scrutinized uh, at the, the latter part of last decade. I mean, it got a lot of media attention. Uh, clearly, the, the secretary at the time was under pressure, and that, that really uh, caused him, um, you know, a lot of problems with remaining in office. So, so, so that's kind of kind of been vetted uh, on that. And in terms of, and I did say during the uh, during the presidential campaign that uh, the federal Epstein file should be released, and and I was committed to do that. Uh, I would challenge uh, Joe Biden to do that now. Uh, I think a lot of uh, these victims would, would appreciate that because uh, th there's still a lot of unanswered questions about how this happened. Yes, sir. Yes, Governor. Um, it was in addition to getting knowledge of what, what these uh, papers might release, is it also possible that this could lead to either more civil action or more criminal charges? And if it's a statute of limitations issue, would you be willing to go to the legislature to try to extend it the way it was done in many states with the Catholic Church in the various Yeah, look, I think we would be interested in, in figuring out how to how to pursue justice. Uh, it is important. This is a rare circumstance. Uh, there very well may be actionable items that, that fall within the statute of limitations. Many of them may not. Uh, and then we'll have to see kind of how, how all that shakes out. But, 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 but I'm open to uh, being able to, to uh, institute policies that are going to try to right a wrong um, because this was not handled in a way that delivered ju what justice required. And, uh, you know, they, when, when, when I hear uh, uh, the, the women talk about never having closure, I mean, just think about that. Like, bad things happen in this world. It's, it's terrible. But if you have something and, and someone does something wrong and you throw the book at them and they get justice meted out, it can never undo what happened. But you do feel a sense. Uh, it, it does help. Right. And, and they never had that. And that's why I think it's been difficult for a lot of them for, for, for many years. Well, so this goes into effect on July 1st. Um, that's typically what the legislature does when they do when they do legislation. So so that'll be the law of the land. And so this will be uh, there'll be you can petition to get this released. And the, the law as written now will effectively compel it to release. If a judge wouldn't do it, you would be able to appeal and get that overturned based on the text of this new law. So I think that that's a positive thing. Well, I don't know. I mean, I you know, it's 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 not. Uh, this is not a, a huge undertaking in terms of what we're talking about here. We're talking about one jurisdiction primarily where this is going to be done. So I don't think it should take uh, forever and a day. I think the legal hurdles will be cleared. And look, I mean, when you're dealing with grand jury material, there's a lot of sensitivity with that, even for the custodian of it. Even if that person may think some of this stuff has public interest, they, there are laws in place. So I get that. Well, now we've cleared the road for this. And so this should be something uh, that happens uh, very quickly and, uh, and, and hopefully that, that we get more answers. You guys have anything more to say? I have a question for you. For me? <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm not part of the media. Um, my question for you is in regards to the documentation that you just signed um, on the bill for them to be released, is there any information in those documents that's going to be filtered or are those documents going to be released as is protecting the victims? So, so, so there is a possibility that a judge could order certain things uh, uh, redacted. Uh, that is possible, um, but I think it's structured in a way where that's disfavored. So, uh, but that that could be something that that, that could be litigated. Uh, but I think, by and large, 
it, it's it's erring on the side of, of disclosure. And that, that's just basically how the legislature decided to structure it, because this is not just applying to Epstein. I mean, this is something that's on the books now in the state of Florida going forward. I mean, it could be used in the Catholic Church situation. You could absolutely have that if you had somebody that was abused decades ago um, and there had been a grand jury investigation that, that, that was uh, unsatisfactory, you would be able to potentially, and, and, the, and the, um, the perpetrator, alleged perpetrator had been deceased, then you can go in with that too. So it's not, not just for that. So I think they structured it with that in mind. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Thanks for coming out. Thank All you right. so much. Yeah. Thank you.